Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2017. Um, this video, I wanted to take a look at the uh, U.S. equity markets, and I'll keep this video short. I had actually spent the better part of this morning uh, composing, putting together, and recording a video uh, that included just about everything I'm watching, starting with the broad markets, gold, silver, GDX, all the precious metal stocks, rolling into commodities, wheat, uh, some of the commodity ETFs. Uh, different sectors like the semis, uh, cannabis stocks, and then I wrapped it up with some of the trade ideas, potential trade ideas that stand out at this time, either unofficial and official. Well, as you can imagine, that video went too long, and uh, what I'm trying to do is keep these under, well, under 30 minutes. So let's just dive into the charts here. I'll do a video only on the broad markets here. There's not a whole lot to cover, so this one won't go long. And then I'll do uh, gold, oil, trade ideas, things like that under separate videos and make these more manageable. And as always, give me your feedback. If you guys prefer one long comprehensive video, I'm more than glad to do it. Uh, but if you like, uh, would prefer the videos broken down, uh, and keep them shorter in time and a little more focused on any one specific uh, part of the markets, I'll do that. All right, this is a SPY daily chart. I have a lot of different boards, different boards meaning drawings where I can click and, and see views. Um, but I can say this, the the charts were a little bit muddled or became unclear after the elections. We had the breakdown. There was this uh, pretty well-defined uptrend line, a breakdown. It started playing out very impulsive. And then Trump won the elections, which kind of threw the markets. So we had that Trump pump snap back into that wedge. Since, you know, the, the, the lines have still been respected. In other words, these trend lines, this was a trend line before. You can see at the initial back test, we rolled off it. Then we shot back within the wedge. We hit the upper trend line. So again, technical analysis does work, but it, it you know, typically when you see a wedge breakdown, um, it's, it's sometimes you'll see this, but it's not very common to come back within the wedge. And then we fell back below the wedge. We've still put in a divergent high at this point. So I, all, I, all I'm trying to say is the daily charts, my read isn't very strong on those. Um, other than the fact, you know, this most recent high was a divergent high. This will show through better on the 60 minute chart. What I'm talking about here now, let me, let me tell you what I'm referring to. I'm talking about the most recent price action. Uh, and that is really what I'm focused on right now at this point in time is the, um, you know, the, the, the near term chart. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong line there. Uh, draw it out here. So there's a divergent high. And again, this wedge right here, this line that I just drew in this one will show well on the 60 minute chart as a bullish uh, bearish, I'm sorry, bearish rising wedge. Uh, but just a glance, the other big one, I watched the two main index indices that I follow are the SPY and QQQ. Those are the large caps. And ultimately, the small mid caps will follow suit. You know, so let's just keep an eye on the big caps. And uh, as you can see, this is a chart I showed many times. The story is the same. It's very simple but effective. You, you know, it takes months, many months, sometimes even years to build a divergent high. But as I say, more often than not, when those divergences are confirmed, we had negative divergence here, there was a divergent high, you had a sharp correction. Divergent high, correction. Divergent high, correction. Uh, we did have a divergent high back here. You can see I have that line drawn out. It was a small divergent high, and there was a correction. So it's not that these divergent highs don't play out. Um, as I often say, from my experience, much, much more often than not, I'm talking 80% or more, when you have confirmed negative divergence, it plays out. Um, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, however, at this point, we have a very large divergent high from this point back here. This has really been an extension of a series of consecutive divergent highs. And um, so what we're watching right now, there's a minor uptrend line. That could be the catalyst. At the very least, a breakdown of that minor uptrend line uh, would be a catalyst for, here, let me clear these other lines out and, and draw this because uh, I need to extend this trend line here. So you have this uptrend line in the queues, a break of this minor trend line would most likely bring you down, find support there, maybe a little one last bounce within the wedge. Uh, these might not be drawn to scale. And then a move down uh, to that 116 area. So I, I, I still strongly favor that. Hard to say when it will come. What I can say with certainty is the trend is up. Uh, simply defined, an uptrend is a series of uh, stocks or an index making a 
I'm sorry, making a series of higher highs and higher lows. And that's what's been the case since uh, 2016, really, a series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, but with that being said, it uh, looks like the time we're, you know the time has about come for the next correction, and I'm looking for a drop of at least uh, 7.5%. Now we can do better zooming down to the 60-minute charts. Uh, this is busy because I have these notes. I've posted this on the front page uh, quite a bit recently, these 60-minute charts of QQQ and SPY, including a couple yesterday. So let's zoom in and see what's happened. This is the bottom of that 60-minute rising wedge I was talking about. Pretty well defined. We have a couple reactions. We had a reaction here, here, several reactions here. Now, if we really zoom in, we can see just how well... Um, prices have been acting off the technicals. Uh, so we had a, a breakdown here. We, we hit the, the trend line, the bottom of the wedge. It held a support for several. These are 60-minute candlesticks on a 60-minute chart that we're on right now. Broke down, a little impulsive selling. Came down, hit support. You can see some reactions, reactions, reactions. Um, hit support. Now, I did point out at the time, that this breakdown in Q, in the queues uh, was not yet confirmed, nor was it ever confirmed yet by a breakdown in the SPY. And um, you know, been trading many years. And one thing I can tell you is these two have, uh, although they're they're different sectors, Q the and Nasdaq 100. Even though they're large cap companies, uh, they emit the financials. They don't include that sector. It's there are many stocks that are the same components. And in fact, Apple is the largest largest component of both uh, SPY and QQQ. And yesterday we had a big gap up because uh, so I won't say solely attributed to Apple, but very largely attributed to Apple. Apple had a very big day on, on earnings and that uh, is the largest component. And you also have many stocks that will follow Apple's lead. We gapped back up. Keep in mind, again, the SPY never gave us a sell signal. Uh, so this sell, sell, sell signal in the queues, as valid as it looked, was not confirmed by the SPY. And I made that clear at the time. Um, we gap back up, but most importantly, look how well prices have behaved um, there. We, I, I pointed out in the morning before the gap even occurred, the top of the gap would be resistance. You had a gap here. So you have uh, the top and the bottom of a gap are both resistance and support, depending on which way you're coming from, above or below. So we had a momentum fueled in the morning, a big rip up, but uh, only briefly. We fell right back down below into the gap. That was just a brief momentum overshoot on the gap. And we closed, I think it was exactly a penny above the bottom of the gap. Uh, so that just shows you how well a you know, technical analysis works. Then that gap failed, the bottom of the gap, which should have acted as support at that point. It did right there because we closed a penny above it. We backfilled, uh, I'm sorry, we broke the gap. We came back down to that 124.90 support level that I was pointing out uh, in advance. And that held. That also happened to come in with this uptrend line. So this is a, just a beautiful display of technical analysis, how well it works. And even then going forward, look how well each and every candlestick to within just pennies, either to the exact penny or within pennies, walked up that trend line. Yeah, we had an intraday spike. It just happened to terminate right around that 124.90 level. Remember, I'm really zoomed in here. Uh, so give or take a couple pennies. Uh, and then look at the body close right back above. Above that trend line so this is now this trend line is just every bit as valid as it was back here before it broke down uh, just because we regained it it is still acting as support as is this gap that's another thing to look at uh, there's that big gap not big I'm sorry it's a gap from last Friday right here and you can see all these candlesticks how they've been acting around there when they hit the top of it that's contained prices and at the, when they hit the bottom of it that is contained prices, at least in this instance, in this instance. So uh, these are the levels of, I'm watching. I call these micro levels. This is only a 60-minute chart, but uh, these are levels I'm watching because if and when we take out this level and print a 60-minute close, especially if it's a, an impulsive candlestick and a, a very solid close above, well, that is most certainly bullish. Then your next resistance comes here at the previous reaction high from last Friday. And that would take us to do highs. Um, something to keep in mind, if you see this trend line that I've drawn here, uh, and I can draw one down here on the RSI. Remember, I'm, I'm zoomed in quite a bit. Um, we have the possibility, as we did, I pointed out, out about a week or so ago, that if we do make a new high, I'm going to draw a trend line here, we punch up, make a new high, 
that may be, or we have the potential, in fact, not only the potential, Potential. If it happens soon, it will almost certainly be another divergent high. So if the PPO goes up, turns down, puts in a lower low, I'm sorry, a lower high, prices go up, make a slightly higher high, and then reverse, then we have another divergent high. Um, so something to watch for. And what I'm referring to here, here's your previous reaction high. Uh, none of this is working for me, guys. Sorry, the drawing tools don't seem to be a little sticky so there's your previous reaction high and until unless these are taken out we have again negative divergence so any new marginal new high followed by a reversal especially a break of these this trend line keep in mind each and every one of these are our support levels this is the big number here 123.88 uh, what I mean by that is if we have another breakdown of this trend line there are you know, there's a series, there's a gap right here. Uh, so there's gap support now, that, that 124.90 level. The bottom of that gap is support. But this is that previous reaction low when we broke down. And uh, I think that would be the final straw that would really trigger some pr a pretty sharp move and a move down to my first target here at around 121.62. That's the actual uh, support level. Second target is this purple uptrend line. And then uh, T3, I have around 119.52 or so. Okay, so uh, again, those are the levels to watch. And trading, you know, the way I view it, uh, each of these levels, it's like a battle. And if you're a bull, you need to win. The more battles you win, you ultimately win the war. So the battles that the bulls need to win right now and break above this, you know, solid print and and close above the top of the gap, then take out those previous highs, and most importantly, burn through these negative divergences. I won't be taking a breakout on a new high to the queues. I can tell you that as long as negative divergence is in place. If they take out that divergent high, it foils the bearish uh, charts, then I may move on, um, you mo d abandon my, my near-term uh, bearish outlook, or, or look for, you're looking out for a reversal. Again, the trend is bullish, but uh, I'm on watch for a reversal. I think that's a most likely thing. And likewise, if you're bearish, uh, the battles that need to be won to win the war, you need to take out each of these levels, each of these horizontal lines. This one will come in right around the, uh, that, the bottom of the gap. So if you took this out, this would be a pretty significant level because you take out both gap support uh, as well as that uptrend line then 124.90, then whatever this level is here, that the bottom of that gap, or yeah, the bottom of the gap, and then, like I said, 123.86. You win all those battles, and I think you've won the war. That opens the door to a swing trade down to any or all those targets that I mentioned. Okay, so enough on that. Uh, did I talk on the 60-minute chart of the SPY? I don't, nope, I don't believe I did. Uh, I did in the previous video this morning. This was a little confused. All right, so we had well-defined numerous reactions, couple reactions back here, reaction there, reaction, reaction. And as I mentioned before, we had a breakdown in the queues that was not confirmed by the S&P 500. So when trading, you want to put the odds in your favor. Do not short or go long an index unless the other one has confirmed. In other words, if you had a breakout in the SPY and the QQQ is at significant resistance and has yet to break out, you're better off just waiting for the breakout in the queues to, to confirm that recent breakout in the SPY. Likewise, if you're bearish looking to short, uh, you know, break down on one it should and needs to be followed by the other in my book. So if we break down, there's a first target. Uh, there's your wedge. Divergent high. And the divergence is actually stronger, more powerful, very clear divergence on the SPY. And that's why I highly favor a um, you know, trend reversal soon. Trend indicators are actually still bearish. They flip back to bullish on the Qs. Uh, again, Apple has a higher weighting in the Qs than it does on the SPY. But I use this uh, 9 EMA when it's above or below this dotted line, the zero line. Uh, that's the there the trend is bullish or bearish right now it's below and has been uh, since uh, the crossover back here and likewise I use this 1333 histogram which is just simply a, a plot of the uh, 1333 EMA when the when the 13 is above or below the 33 this goes red or green and that helps to find the trend now we could flip bullish 
uh, you know, on any more upside. But these are the levels to watch. You can see these horizontal lines. These are support levels. Here's a big old gap to watch. Uh, let's see if the SPY continues to move higher today. It's got to take out that gap. If it does, your next uh, resistance are the previous reaction highs. Uh, if you're looking for a downside break or whether you're long or short, it doesn't matter. If you're long, um, you need to be on alert if this trend line breaks. And if that trend line breaks, you need to then watch this 20. 224.87 level because that is a, a pretty decent horizontal support level. All right, so let's uh, let's move on now. Actually, we don't need to move on because that 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 covers all I'm looking for. We can we can zoom down to the five minute charts, everything else. Um, there are there are periods where I day trade, but this is a uh, sloppy market. Although I mentioned the technicals are working well. It's hard to game which one of these these levels you'll have a reversal off of. And most importantly, I'm just looking for, as I said, a break of both of these wedges. And then uh, some of those, uh, on the, especially on the Qs, there's a little bit more um, horizontal support levels to watch. And I could always add a few here. There's quite a few reactions there around uh, 226, 42 or so. All right, those are the levels I'm watching. And I will do, as I mentioned, I'll put up static post or videos uh, coverage on gold. Uh, the commodities, wheat, grains, things I'm following like that, semiconductors I'd like to talk on, um, the marijuana cannabis sector I could always talk on, and uh, as well as a handful of trade ideas. I've had quite a few alerts go off in the last day or two, and there's some, some trading ops that I'd like to share. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.